All right, so I'm working on a 7800 Atari, and I got to tell you, I don't think I'm ever going to offer mod services for this thing. It has been a nightmare, and this is like the only one I've ever done, promise. And I hate it start to finish. Um, start out, um, I was just doing this as a favor because the guy wanted a 2600 Junior um, composite and S-Video modded, and I could not figure out how to get an S-Video connector on there anywhere using my connector, I should say. And um, I haven't been able to get on my website to change it to take that off there either. But he was fairly upset about it, so I said, well, and he said something about modding the 7800. I said, well, I'll mod your 7800 for you since I couldn't do the 2600 Junior with S-Video. So he said cool, and I said, but you'll have to buy the kit, and he did. He sent me the uh, Longhorn Engineer kit. I think he got it off eBay, and um, I've heard here and there where there might be a Batari version for the 7800, but I've not actually seen it. I've only seen the Longhorn Engineer, and then I've seen one composite mod that was supposed to be the easy composite mod, but the guy wanted this video. Um, so he sent me a console, and... I follow the Longhorn Engineer directions or electronic sentimentalities. I think he has, I think he's the one that sold it to this guy anyway. It said to put the connectors on here on the side, on the bottom. So I did. It was an S video composite and um, a mono audio connector. And I gotta tell you, this plastic is insanely, insanely brittle. It, it'll break using even just a little three millimeter drill bit. You know, on the inside you'll have chips breaking off on the inside, and you got to have the right bits. Like I use the uh, the Unibit a lot for this, and it works just barely. Um, I think it it even says on Longhorn Engineer's site to use a Forstner bit, and I don't have any of those, especially in the right size. So it was a big fuckeroo. I super glued this, the S video connector onto the back side here because I didn't want to make more holes to put screws in and stuff and that came off so he sent it back to me and I put the connector on there that came with the kit the kit which I never use it's one of those that has a a giant screw on the outside to hold it on there which worked fine and the freaking post office busted this whole corner of the bottom half of the shell off somehow during shipping so this will be the third time I've had this console here same one. He um, he was able to file a claim and got I don't know fifty bucks or whatever. You know we didn't have insurance on it, but there's like fifty dollars indemnity insurance on it on it. So we used that to get a broken console that had a good shell. So he sent me that he sent me the board and the new shell back, and he wanted the connectors on the back right here, which I was able to do. I screwed it up again. Um, but anyway, there's only like, God, there's only like a half inch or something uh, in between this side and, and the back side. So it's super, super cramped in there this way. And my S video connector just would not fit in there. I had to like chop some plastic off the back of it to get it to smash down in there, but it ain't going nowhere now. He'll never push that through, and you know, there's a little bit of S or a super glue on it just to hold it in place from rotating, and uh, that got sorted. And and then in, and then the customer was complaining. Well, the collar changes after it's been left on for a while, which I honestly have never seen before. He said something, and sure enough, he was right. And I just did a 2600 like yesterday or something, and it did the exact same thing. Um, there is a pot on here that you can adjust to get the collar just right. Well, I always set it right when I turn it on, and then just let it run, and I never really pay attention to the colors, but he was right. It, it, it's changing after it gets warm. And I know it's not just the 7800 now, because I did the, I'm pretty sure it was a, a 2600 Vader I did yesterday, or the day before. Exact same thing. So. That was a big issue, and I did a you know two or three days worth of research on that to find out that, as far as I know, as far as I can tell, there's no fix for that. I don't know why, what causes it. The only um, possible fix 
that anybody said anything about was replacing the, the uh, 7805, the 5 volt re voltage regulator. So I did put a new one on here and actually did seem to help, but I don't know that it fixed it. And then we move on to, um, oh, I didn't have a 7800 uh, cartridge. So the guy had to send me one and I finally got those today. And I, he had he sent me one that had a black background Galaga and then one that has a colorful background Desert Falcon. Because I kept because while I was doing that all that research, I found out that uh, there's going to be some serious interference on the 7800 side. Okay, it looks fine now, but when I touch the TI9 pin together. It just goes crazy. Now it's gone. If I connect it and disconnect it, you can see that interference is all that TNI pin. So that's actually a very common fix for that is to have a switch on that one wire there. There's just a, um, we got maybe five wires going off to different places on the board. And then, of course, you've got the board uh, wired in in place of a 74. Uh, LS32 chip and it has a 32 surface mount chip on there and then the mod which looks exactly like the 2600 mod so maybe that's where they're getting the Batari slash Longhorn mod for this but I've never seen the rest of Batari's circuitry on there in, pla in place of the Longhorn circuitry so that'll definitely need to switch to get rid of that so my last problem here is to get the freaking collars right you can see S video it's green and down here it's brown and no matter what I do for the adjusting wheel the only thing that seems to be adjusting here is the blue you know and it goes crazy but it doesn't seem like the, the actual land, the green, which is green on this video does anything on composite down here so, I'm kind of at a loss. So, this is why I don't ever want to work on 7800s like ever, ever again. The, the few things that would help is if we had a perfect video mod for composite and desk video. No screwing around. And that we used a cord output style mod instead of actually putting connectors on the back because it was just super super intensely frustrating um, you know trying not to break it um, and of course having to pack the shit out of this thing and I'm talking this is going to go into a big big box bigger than way bigger than I would normally pack a console this size into with lots of extra padding because it's just way 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 too brittle so, yeah, if anybody has any ideas on permanent fixes, especially for this color problem, I'd be much appreciated. Um, I can actually set the color to what I think is right with a 2600 game. Okay, so, oh, okay, the bottom one is doing 2600 stuff, and then the top one was possibly the 7800. But, like I said, I can't adjust anything. I can't adjust the green and brown on it, it's just just the blue for that top pot. So the bottom one's 2600 and the top one's 7800, that makes sense. But what doesn't make sense is my difference here. I don't know if it's the mod. I mean you've got composite is made with the FMS 6400 chip. 
you know, it feeds luma and chroma into that chip and it gets luma, chroma, and composite out of it. So, how it would be so different up here is, it's too weird. So, I'll uh, maybe dig into it a little, a little bit more, but I don't think this console is going to sit around here too much longer. The owner's ready to have it back.